Bradley is yay. It's amazing. <laughs> this week, you got, you got, you got uh, we, need, we need you to be on Rotten Tomatoes. Very yay. <laughs> hey, this movie is fresh. Yeah, it's fresh. Oh, it's just, it was freshly grown. It's crisp. It's juicy. <laughs> it's full of color. I love it. I love it. Wow. Are you a writer? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Got it. Um, this it feels like both of your roles, it kind of feels like it was destiny. Because I say this because I know that your, your name, Mustafa, means chosen. And your name is chosen. So. It's funny you said that. Like, did you, did, like, did, you, you did some serious research. Like, like, that's a rare one. People, people don't catch that one. But yeah. Yep. That's, that's true. Yep. That's true. Yeah. So, so I, I. Yeah, I guess so. I feel that you guys, you, you. You did such a really great job becoming one. And I, for everything from like, because it's different when you're doing like an older version of someone, you know, and, but we see the flashbacks. And so as an audience member, we have that direct connection with each other, you know, through both of your characters. So can you talk a little bit about kind of what was the preparation between you two in order to create this one character? I, I think Andy... Andy's casting, like, Andy, Andy knew Chosen before I did, so he obviously saw qualities in Chosen that he was looking for in, in, in an adult. And so then when I met with Andy for the first time in Toronto, uh, we had coffee, and, and it was just kind of, you know, the, the Andy's such a, like, a cool guy, he's mellow. You just talk about stuff and just kind of, like, you know, talk about interests and this, that, and the other. And so I was, I, I mean, I guess I was just, Probably behaving the way Chosen would have behaved in a conversation with him, because he was like, "Man, he's like, I, he's like, you, you remind me of Chosen." Like that's what he said, like immediately, and I was like, "Oh, that's good." <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, that's a good time," you know. And then, then what he said was, he goes, he looked at me for a long time, and he goes, he goes, "Would you do you care about shaving?" And I was like, "No, I've had a beard this time." And I was like, "No, I don't care. I'll shave for the role." He goes, "Yeah." He was like, "Like, I, I have a feeling when you shave your face, you're gonna look really like Chosen." And I was like, "Okay, cool." You know, so so I, I credit Andy with the beginning of it, but then after meeting Chosen, I was just like, oh, cool, man. Like, this kid was so cool, and everyone was telling me, like, that we had the same energy. So I, I just kind of, like, built on that, and then also watching the film. It was, it was pretty easy to, to, to kind of build that foundation anyway. Okay, cool. And what does it feel like for you, Chosen, to kind of come and have another actor come in and kind of, in a sense, not necessarily mimic but to know that your performance is something that he that has to be lived up to in the next movie. It's kind of it's very weird actually, if I'm being honest, because I'm a young actor and I'm always trying to get better. And of course, I think I'm I'm trying to be the best I can at my job. But I know I have a lot more growing to do. A lot of anybody looking up to my acting is a very uh, a very uh, peculiar feeling, <laughs> a very humbling feeling. But I like I tell everyone, he came so prepared. I, I didn't have I didn't tell him anything honestly. He he already knew all my nuances, all my inflections, everything like that. And beyond that, of his ability to watch me and take those nuances, he also added a character that I, that would have life because people change with time. Uh -huh. So I could have asked for a better thespian to take on this endeavor with. Aww. <laughs> You broke me down, man. Um, now, what I love both about about the role is that everyone reacts differently to Pennywise, and it seems that you guys have like it's a mental obsession, and you kind of see that you know in the very beginning of the movie, and when it comes to the second part, it it kind of takes a toll on on Mike, and you see that kind of fracture of what he once was and now what he's become. Um, was there any kind of discussion or kind of research that went through what it was like to kind of have that kind of uh, that obsession? Because it's, it's like a mental impact that really affects both of you. Um, I know Andy was telling me, Andy told me, you, you just basically like broke it down like here. This is where you were, this is where you need to be. And so that made it easy for me. But one thing that I, I used from that Chosen had in the first movie was, I, like, if you notice that when they when they go to fight him, fight Pennywise, that is, um, Chosen's the only one that brings, like, a real weapon. Because he's just like, I'm not taking, like, a stick to a knife fight, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm going to be prepared. So, like, he and, like with that, he was, like, you know, charged in there. Um, but but as time goes on, and, and when Mike gets older, he, he starts to use, a, he starts to use his intelligence instead of, instead of just using, like, you know, a front, a blunt, like, force. He starts to use, like, intelligence to, to figure out how to get in there and kind of defeat Pennywise at his own game. So, it, that, for me, that's 
kind of like like those moments that stuck out for me in the first film that kind of led me to do what I did in the second film. Okay. Now I know for you, Isaiah, you kind of had to delay your wedding in order to audition for this part again. I know you went through several auditions and you finally got the role, and it was kind of like your birthday present. Your your not birthday, your wedding present. Sorry. Wedding. Yes. And anniversary, actually. Yeah. Wedding and anniversary. That's a good present, though. Yeah. Well, like we. Like it wasn't the wedding that was postponed. It was my flying out to. The, we were, we got married in Austin, right? so we had to fly out from LA. Uh -huh. And the day that we had to fly out was the day that Andy requested to see me one more time. Literally that morning. So like he called that morning one more time. I was like, oh man. So I went and did it one more time. I had to like try to get back in the place that I was, and that, it was, that was tough. And I was all happy, ready to go to get married. And the character, as you know, is a little less. He's not the happiest guy in the world. So I was like, oh man. <laughs> So that was a little tricky, but the cool thing was, is on our wedding anniversary, we just, we had to fly out to do reshoots, so literally we spent our anniversary, like it came full circle, like the whole movie was like, like revolved around us getting married, it was so cool. That is kind of, that is really cool, and it, it just kind of shows your, your focus and your drive in order to, to be in this movie. And that's what I love so much also. And also, um, during the preparation, you said that you've read the book multiple times, but you also listened to the audio book. And I was wondering, when you listened to the audio book, was it something that you was able to pick up more so than, say, reading the book and how it impacted you during the filming? Did you, did you listen to the audio book? Did you listen to the audio book? Did you listen to the audio book? Yeah, okay. So did you listen to the Stephen Weber one? Yeah, okay. It's so, very different. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't read. I never read the book hard, but I never read like actually reading the book. Mm -hmm. So I'm used to reading books via audible. Yeah, because it just makes it easier for me. But um, I say, I think I actually kind of enjoy it more because if you get a really good reader, yeah, the voice is kind of mean so much more. That's what I'm gonna say. Like the voice is made it more entertaining, like to go through piece by piece because you kind of get the ambiance of of it. Exactly. I read it cover to cover, like by myself on my own, like read it. But when I listen to it, I just put it like, I literally for months, I put it on repeat and Stephen Weber, he's such a good narrator. Like I picked up so many different things that I wasn't even, I was like, wow, I wasn't even, I didn't hear that when I was like reading it. So I, I credit a lot of like, just like knowledge or research to Stephen Weber's, his, his, uh, his oration, his, his, his narration of that book. Yeah, his, his voice. Like, like, my favorite, my favorite narrator on there, and then Jeremy Irons. Oh man, yeah, true. <laughs> so I know, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, also, when it came to filming, was there any type of collaboration that you guys were able to do with, say, the directors or the writers, in order to fully bring out Mike's best potential? One thing about uh, Andy, he's an actress director, mm -hmm. so I'm sure. Especially because you, if you've seen the film, you know how Isaiah's character is involved in the film. Mm -hmm. I promise, I can guarantee there are moments, and he just comes up to you saying, what, what do you think the character would do? Yep. And he, he, just to see what you'll give him. And that's such an empowering thing as an actor, just to have a director that believes in you as an actor, not as just a, someone who's just saying lines, but as an artist. So I definitely have many moments. I couldn't even give you one time because almost every time on set, he gives you one one take. Do it crazier. This is something different. And you're like, okay, cool. And, you know, it might be the craziest or it might be the best or worst take you did that day. But the fact that you have the freedom to do it and you don't feel nervous to do it is always a great feeling. Yeah, I, I, have to, I just have to say, yeah, yeah, what you said. <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering also, when it comes to, like, you're doing a horror movie and you have Pennywise's right there, what do you do to constantly stay in that mental state of mind while on set? Oh, it's not hard with Andy. Andy puts you in that mental state of mind immediately. Like, you can go back to Video Village and watch something or whatever, and you guys can be laughing about something else, like, and then go, all right, let's go back, you know, set up. And once you get back on set, Andy gets on the God mic, and he'll be like, okay. And he'll start telling you what, like, where you need to be or what's going on. And you're immediately 